All right, my Bible in 365, brothers and sisters, we're here. We are at the book. Yes, the great one. Paul's letter to the Hebrew church, the book of Hebrews, and this is a great one. I'm going to just say this right now. I know there's a lot of people that want to argue about with me about who wrote the book of Hebrews, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to lose this argument because I am fully persuaded that Paul is the one who wrote this book. Now, we're not going to get into all the technical reasons why that's the case, but there is one aspect of the literature itself that you need to understand that I'm going to discuss. Well, probably let me just discuss it right now because it's important. Language is a tricky thing. Now, you guys know this. There are so many of you brilliant people that watch these summaries that understand language well. Many of you have phenomenal oration capability. Many of you are avid readers. Many of you are very, very serious about your education. So you know how language is a very, very tricky thing depending on what avenue you're seeking to pursue. And certain words can have or carry certain implications depending on what culture you're in, what circumstance, what world you're in, what country you're in. All of these things mean something completely different. And I think it's really important how the use of certain words or numbers for that matter uh, can drastically change the meaning of the things that you read. Now, I can give you this example. I could, for example, give you the count of one through 10. Now, that could be significant to my three-year-old because my three-year-old, by the time she was two, I think, already had learned how to count to 10. So when you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, well, that's a big deal to her because she's learning how to count to 10. Now, if I go to my six-year-old and I take those same numbers and I structure them a slightly different way, if I say 48 divided by six, well, those are the same numbers that you find in the count from one to 10, but they're being applied a completely different way. Now, let's take it to a completely different level and let's talk about maybe somebody who might have law enforcement experience. I might get on my walkie-talkie and I might use those same numbers to communicate something that is not even mathematical in nature. I could get on the radio and I could say 9, 12, 10, 19, 10, 33. And a lot of people might not understand what that means. Now, by the way, if you work in LA County, what I said is completely contradictory because what I just asked is clearance to go to the station in order to make an emergency broadcast. <laughs> but depending on what region you're in, it will have a completely different uh, uh, connotation. My point is language changes dramatically based on the culture, based on the background and based on the world in which you're in. And this is where we find the conundrum that exists with the book of Hebrews because the Hebrew language and the Hebrew culture is a very dynamically equivalent one. In other words, context makes the greatest determination for what the meaning of a specific word means. I could go to you and I could say, Hey, that picture is yellow, and that means that there is the color yellow in it. Or I could say that person is yellow. Now, that could mean they're jaundiced. That could mean maybe they're sick, or that could be a very racial or derogatory term. It could also mean that you're a coward. Depending on how the word is used, it could mean something completely different. If I'm in a room filled with pipe inspectors in a building, and I say, what's cracking? They're going to look around, what pipe? What, what, what's cracking? Or if I walk up to somebody that's maybe uh, in, in Philly or uh, maybe somewhere on the West Coast in some urban area, and I go, what's up, man? What's cracking? It takes on a completely different meaning. This is an important principle to understand with the book of Hebrews because he, the language, the Hebrew language and the Hebrew culture takes on a completely different set of ideas in how you translate principles. And when you bring it into its proper context using the Greek language, it becomes absurdly, absurdly uh, complicated, okay? For example, in Arabic, if I were to tell you, the literal translation to that is go into the ice and get me something cold. That's what that means. But if I were to translate it in a dynamically equivalent fashion based on the context where I am, my body uh, language, the mannerisms in which I, uh, I carry myself and the tone that I use when I speak, I could be telling somebody instead of go to the ice and get me something cold, I could actually be telling them, hey, go to the fridge and get me a Coke. 
Hebrew language very much works that way. The Greek language does not work that way. The Greek language is a very word for word language and every single word, every single vowel, every single note, every single rough breather, everything that you find in the Greek language has a very specific meaning and the connotations it carries is a very, very uh, uh, specific one. Now, there are some agilities that tend to exist within some of the constructs of the language, which changes things. But here's why I say it's a big deal. You are taking a clearly Hebrew culture and you are now communicating it in a language that is not Hebrew. It's, it's almost like me talking about something that's going on in South America using a, a mindset or an understanding that the West has in the United States of America with an English language. It can be very complicated. So we know that this is Paul that's writing this because the person that wrote it had to have been able to understand what the difference is in the nuances and he does a good job. Now, with all of that being said, let me simply say that the Greek language in the New Testament, the most complicated Greek in the New Testament is going to be in the book of Hebrews for that reason, okay? Now, I gave you a lot more than you probably wanted or bargained for. Matter of fact, probably some of you have already fast forwarded this section of the video, but let me bring in why Hebrews is going to mean so much to you. Hebrews is going to mean so much to you because what the apostle Paul does to the Hebrew church is he goes out of his way to demonstrate that Jesus is superior to everything. He's superior to the angels. He's superior even to the Aaronic priesthood. One of the big problems that these Hebrews had was how can Jesus come from the tribe of Judah and still be a priest? Only the tribe of Judah, they produce the kings. How can he be a priest? It doesn't make sense. Yet, what the apostle Paul is going to do is he's going to say that the line of priesthood in which Jesus comes from has nothing to do with the Aaronic priesthood because the priestly line that Jesus comes from existed before even Abraham. And that priestly line was the line of Melchizedek that we read about in the book of Genesis. So Jesus comes from the priestly line of Melchizedek, not the Aaronic priesthood. And what that means is that Jesus's priesthood is far superior than anything that may have come from the Levites because Jesus's priesthood even predates Abraham himself. This is particularly why it's extremely important to understand the significance of Jesus saying before Abraham was, I am. Now that has distinct relevance to the moment that Moses uh, meets the Lord at the burning bush, but there's so much more to be said there that we don't have time to be able to go over. With all of that said, you need to understand that the superiority of Christ in every context becomes the most major theme that you will see in the book of Hebrews, and it also becomes what should be the major theme for your heart when you go through this book. In my opinion, folks, the book of Hebrews happens to be one of the most profound books in the Bible. You will be blessed if you want to be able to find confidence in the power of God's word, to take care succinctly of the matters of your heart, the book of Hebrews is the place to go. If you're looking to be able to find understanding and discernment and knowledge concerning all the matters that life presents and how God himself can be the intervener for all of those things, you'll find it in the book of Hebrews. If you want to know why I refuse to shut my church down during the COVID era, you'll find it in the book of Hebrews. If you want to know why I can have confidence in the fact that my mom and dad are in heaven and I have something to look forward to, you can find it in the book of Hebrews. You can learn about your faith. You can learn about the power of God in your life to transform you and change you. And Hebrews gives you everything that you need to walk in confidence over your salvation, and it gives you everything you need to be successful in every area of your life, your business, your relationships, your marriages, whatever it is, well, marriage, <laughs> all of those things, you find it in the book of Hebrews. It's powerful. Don't skip out. It's remarkable. And whatever you do, really, really spend some time to analyze what God is saying in the depth of it. Now, I want to give you a homework assignment. This is important to me. Please listen to my studies through the book of Hebrews. Binge listen to them. It, it happens to be one of the most powerful and impacting books in the Bible and one of my favorite to teach through. Go through my most recent teaching on the book of Hebrews. 
Go to jameskadis.com, grab those teachings. I can make you this promise. I'm going to promise you, right? Money back guarantee. It will radically change your life. You will love the book. It will transform you. Listen to the word by word, chapter by chapter teaching. It's going to impact your life and it's going to be great. By the way, let me just simply say this. I love you guys. We're at the end of October. Wonderful things are happening. God is faithful. I'm proud of you. Keep fighting the good fight. And folks, let me just tell you something. Christ could come at any moment. Hebrews will remind you of that. So live your life to the fullest, knowing that your master comes to be reconciled to you soon. God is faithful. He knows what he's doing. Fight the good fight. And remember, Christ could come at any moment. I'm proud of you guys. God bless you. Keep on keeping on.